I'm Sandy Woodward, and I'm the Open Power Compliance Work Group. Okay, thank you. Hello, I'm Sandy Woodward, and I'm the Open Power Foundation Compliance Work Group Chair. I have over 20 years experience with the power architecture. I'm a senior technical staff member at IBM and an IBM Academy of Technology member. Today I'm going to discuss open power compliance. Let's look at the agenda for today. First, I will give an introduction to open power compliance with the review of the open power architecture compliance definition, which I described in more detail at last year's open power. Next, I will describe Open Power CAPI Accelerator Compliance. The pl Compliance Work Group has generated an Open Power Compliance Accelerator Compliance Test Harness and Test Suite specification that I will be going through, be going through public review soon. Today, I will describe that, the concepts from that document to address Open Power CAPI Accelerator Compliance. Lastly, I will wrap up with providing an outlook of the compliance workgroup activities for 2016. Let's start with the Open Power C Compliance Introduction. The compliance workgroup has generated an Open Power Architecture Compliance Definition Specification. It documents Open Power specifications that contain instances required to be Open Power compliant. These open power specifications are work products of other open power work groups. Each specification defines certain open power architecture features, interfaces, and facilities, and it, in its conformance to the specification section, just defines which are required and which are optional for compliance. The open Power Architecture Compliance Definition Specification documents an overview of the compliance test harness and test suite specifications that are being developed in the compliance work group. It documents procedures on how to measure and document compliance and where to sub submit compliance report. The Open Power Architecture Compliance Definition Work Group spec is on the Open Power Foundation public website. Now I will describe Open Power CAPI Accelerator Compliance. To begin the discussion on Open Power CAPI Accelerator Compliance, let's look at the various pieces in Open Power CAPI Accelerator Solution in the diagram. At the top is the application that is interfacing to the open source CAPI kernel driver for supervisor calls. It interfaces to the CAPI Accelerator Library, LibCXL, for user mode functions. It interface to the coherent attached processor proxy a hardware and the which operates with the power service layer to enable accelerator function unit to operate on system memory in a fast, coherent manner. The hardware interface pointed to with the arrow between the CAPI kernel driver CAPI accelerator library and the coherent attached processor proxy is defined in the coherent accelerator interface architecture spec, which is also available on the Open Power Foundation public website. The hardware interface pointed to with an arrow between the power service layer and the accelerator function unit is defined in the PSL to AFU interface spec, which is also available on the Open Power Foundation public website. Now let's look at compliance for each of these hardware interfaces, starting with the PSL to AFU test harness and test suite. The test harness used to execute the PSL to AFU test suite should emulate the PSL hardware behavior as it reacts to and drives the PSL AFU interface. It should verify the, that the PSL AFU interface specification is not violated in testing the required and optional facilities of the PSL AFU interface. 
The PSL simulation engine is one example. It is available on GitHub, and I have the link to the website here. The specific tests are determined by what the application and the AFU are programmed to do. The ge general recommendations for verification with the PSL LE is that it provides some randomness on the interface, and therefore long running test cases will provide the most coverage. Also, you ensure that the PSL SC PARMS file is set correctly for your tests. The PSL AFU test suite test should verify that the F AFU adheres to the PSL AFU interface. It should exercise each of the AFU interfaces and ensure correct operation. For the AFU MMIO interface, it should ensure that the AFU descriptor space is decoded correctly and valid values are returned. For the AFU buffer interface, it should test the AFU supported read buffer latency of either one or three. For the PSL response interface, it should ensure the PS AFU completes success successfully with done and is able to handle address and data errors. For the AFU control interface, you should ensure that the AFU decodes reset and start commands and operates correctly. The test suite test should also exercise the implemented optional facilities. For successful execution of the PSL AFU test, the PSL simu simulation engine or any other test harness should have a return code zero to indicate successful completion with no errors. It should have a non-zero return code if to indicate failures. It should have error messages to indicate what failed. If there is a non-zero return code, you should debug and fix the design and then run the test again. Now let's talk about the CAIA hardware interface. The test harness to execute the CAIA test suite should provide an environment to test the existence and operation of required and implemented optional CAIA facilities. An open power ready system can be used. An open power ready system contains the open power ISA profile processor chipset which is the Power8 processor, Power8 with NVIDIA NVLink processor, or CP1 processor. And it has at least one Centaur memory buffer with memory. It has a modest derivative of the open power abstraction layer firmware and has at least one boot device. You can see the open power ready 2016 definition and criteria workgroup notes for complete definition on the Open Power Foundation public website. For the CAIA test suite, you should develop a functional application that tests the existence of required and optional CAIA facilities and should verify correct behavior. The open source kernel, CAPI kernel driver can be used to get access to privileged CAIA facilities and the CAPI Accelerator Library, LibCXL, or equivalent, can be used to get access to user mode CAIA facilities. For successful execution of CAIA tests, each test in the test suite of tests should have a return code zero to indicate successful completion with no errors and should have non-zero return code to indicate failures. The test harness should summarize the results, and if there is a non-zero return code, it should show error messages indicating what failed. If there is a non-zero return code, you should debug the failure and fix the design, then run the tests again. To be open power CAP accelerator compliant, you need to have successful execution of the PSL AFU tests and successful execution of the CAIA tests. 
Now I will give an outlook of the compliance work group activities for 2016. The compliance work group is planning to develop open power compliance test harness and test suite specifications for other areas of compliance, such as the open power instruction set architecture profile compliance and the open power IO design architecture version two compliance. These will be for compliance of the open power instruction set architecture profile specification and the IODA version two specification that are available on the open power foundation website today. There will also be more compliance specifications as other work groups complete work group specifications. If you are an Open Power Foundation member, I invite you to join and participate in the compliance work group meetings. Thank you for your attention.